Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good, good. I'm glad that five, at least five people responded. <laughs> so my name is Pastor Christoph. I'm a pastor here at the Month of the Lord Church. So I'm so glad that you tune in. We are going to be blessed because God's word is always intended to transform us. God's word is to nourish our spiritual side of us and to transform us as you believe in it. So today is uh, moving from death to life. Well, I don't know what is look like death in your life. I don't know what look like it's not working in your life. But the hope is God is calling you so he can move you from where you are to give you a better way. So it's about moving from death to life. What I have seen is to maintain brotherly world, relationship or spirit of brotherly world is so complicated right now around us. When you look at families, um, intercultural, religion, is there so much conflict between ourselves to the point where we wonder how can we be able to fix what we are facing. But the point is, when we look ourselves and we look our face, we just look like Adam and Eve. So we are made in the image of God and look like Jesus Christ. And because he made us that way, we are one in him. So if we shouldn't be, have a problem. We should have a difficulties in our own life to live a better life and to love each other and to care for each other. But this was the opposite for what we've been experiencing. So we're going to be uh, reading from Genesis 37. And this Genesis 37 actually is about uh, Jacob and Judah and Reuben, uh, Reuben. The old son is Reuben. And Judah has taken the authority like the firstborn. And Jacob is the father who uh, we're going to be talking about the whole thing today. So we will see how this, uh, we'll, we will learn something to maintain our brotherly relationship and what to do in order to correct the problem, or the possibility that we are seeing uh, who's not working in our life. So we're going to read Genesis 37 verse 1 to 4 and then 12 to 28. So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father flocks. He worked with his half-brothers, the son of his father's wife, Beha and Zilpah. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brother were doing. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brother hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. Soon after, verse 12, soon after this, Joseph's brother went to pastor their father's flock at Shechem. When they had been gone for some time, Jacob say, said to Joseph, your brother are pastoring the sheep at Shechem, get ready, and I will send you to them. And he responded, I'm ready to go. And verse 14, go and see how your brother and his, the flock are getting along. Jacob said, then come back and bring me a report. So Jacob sent him on his way, and Joseph traveled to Shechem from their home in the valley of Hebron. When he arrived there, a man from area noticed him 
wandering around the countryside. What are you looking for, he asked. I'm looking for my brother, Joseph replied. Do you know where they are pasturing the sheep? Yes, the man told him. They, move, they have moved on from here, but I heard them say, let's go and do them. So Joseph followed his brother to do them and found them there. When Joseph's brother saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance as he approached. They made, they made a plan to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of this system. We can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we will see what become of his dreamer, his dreams. But when Reuben heard of their scam, he came to Joseph's rescue. Let's not kill him, he said. Why should we shed any blood? Let's just throw him into the empty system here in the wilderness. Then he will die without our laying a hand on him. Reuben, Reuben was secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. So when Joseph arrived, his brother ripped off the beautiful robe of who he was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the system. Now the system was, was empty. There was no water in it. Then just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up, they look up and saw a caravan of camel, camel in the distance coming toward them. It was a group of Ishmaelites, trader, taking a load of gun, bomb, and aromatic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Verse 26, Judah said to his brother, what will we gain by killing our brother? We will have to cover up the crime. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Israel, uh, Ishmaelite threader. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood, and his brother agree with that suggestion. And when the Ishmaelite, and so when the Ishmaelite who were Midianite threader came by, Joseph's brother pulled him out of the system and sold him to them for 20 pieces of silver. And the trader took him to Egypt. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We bless your holy name for all you're going to do in our life today. God, is something we can learn, something that we needed to see through this. Holy Spirit, help me, Lord, to deliver your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So we, when we read this whole thing, we see, we can tell right away the jealousy of what is going on. Joseph is a beloved, uh, uh, one that is, his father loves so much. So Joseph is also have a dream. And he have a dream, that dream says that uh, the parent and the brothers will bow to him. Another one will serve him. So Joseph, one way the dream is not make the family, the whole family comfortable. And the top of that, his father have made things worse because he really makes things uh, so clear that he loves uh, Joseph more than the rest of the children. And the top of that, he has made a beautiful robe of many colors. So I don't know about you, there are moments we have to learn about this, no matter how our children might look like, no matter problem they might be causing constantly in our household, they're still our children. We have to use a wisdom to know how to love all of them. 
learn how to correct them and also how to love them. So the story here is a little bit make you think twice. Jacob loved the children, but he always makes something that so make the, the rest of the children not comfortable with Joseph because he loved him more than the rest. And he have him in his old age. You know, I don't know when you have somebody in old age, you are so, you know, so happy about it. And most of them, you know, uh, when you have a grandson, a granddaughter, or grandchildren, it's just the, the same behavior, right? You just want to love on them to the point where they become disobedient children or kids. But I hope that's not your case. But this is a kind of thing to try to make you believe that uh, it should not be that way. From a young age, Joseph believed God has destined him for greatness. Uh, this is a, a something that can happen to every one of us. Many times, God might be speaking to you, have a destiny in your life, but there's is no way to explain it for people to understand. We are talking about God who have a plan from someone. When a God has a plan for you, uh, he's going to come to fulfill. That plan will come to fulfillment because he is God. But so many times, ourselves, it's difficult to figure it out so quick that what is going on is God's plan in our life. So we saw, we saw the experience of Joseph as 70 years old. God is speaking to him, and here he is trying just to make his brother knowing that you're going to buy down to me and serve me. I think it's an immature kind of things we should be saying, even though we know does that God have a plan for us? God always have something. In that dream, God assured Joseph that he will rise to the position of leadership over his parents. Joseph point of view, the, uh, the view, this dream were evidence of divine blessing rather than his own ambition. You know, we all have ambition to do so many things. So we think about greatness that we want to accomplish. But there are moments when God himself puts things in your heart and uh, ordains you for something great in your life, and sometimes it rests in your soul. That's why makes some people never give up. You never give up even though things look like it's not working. But something about you, inside you, that makes you believe, but even though I'm not seeing what I thought I would be seeing, I know the best is yet to come in my life. I don't know about you, you might be in the same position right now, that you know deep down in your heart that God is moving, God is speaking to you, but actually when you look around, you don't see that sign. Some people saying that you don't even know what you're doing. Yeah, that's the way God works. People may not know what you are doing because the vision or the call or the anointing is not on them. It's on you. Therefore, you are the only one who knows what God's telling you to do. So you have to be consistent of what God is telling you. But the brother's point of view is the dream will further manifest an unfair privilege. It's like saying, because the culture back then, the older have to get a high position. How could it be that the last will be the first? But the Bible talk about that so clearly that there are the, the, the time where the last person will be the, the first and the first will be the last. But over here, we are seeing how God has already appointed through the circumstances to use Joseph to save the nation and his family. So we are in, in a position right now that uh, the, the brothers could not take this. They could not believe that, uh, Jake, uh, that uh, Joseph can be in that kind of position. So they hate him. 
is like uh, why should not be me? Why is not that guy? Why is not this guy? Why just him? This is the kind of things going on. But when the household uh, miss or lack leadership, you will see this kind of division among the kids. So we have to get leadership right here to see and to make everybody equal to each one. That will be, I think, one of the first lessons we're supposed to be learning. Love your family members. Love your children in the same level. Because you never know. People of the spirit of this world, the things that we do sometimes can invite the, the, the heart because the heart of people are really uh, difficult to understand. So as you are doing things according to your heart, as you are moving properly the way you're supposed to do things, I think this is going to be seen by the children and they will know truly that you are moving in God's direction. So this is Jacob's family. So they have a 12th son of Jacob. The 12th son became the 12th tribe of Israel. And who was the 12th individual call, calling become the nation of Israel? So we're talking about Reuben, uh, Reuben who is uh, Jacob's first son. He played a big role. And I love why he said, no, you guys, you cannot plan this. You cannot kill our brother, but throw him to the pit. He said, throw him, to him into the pit. The, what he's saying is that we see later in the scripture as a way to calm down the family and after that to save him and brought him back to his father. But he have, he have that, but the rest of Judah or the rest of people don't know. They've been thinking that he's going to die there because he was not in the place and that position when they took uh, Jacob out of the pit and sell him to Ishmaelite. So what can we learn from that? Uh, what I'm thinking is you might have a good ideas in your life. The good things to do. There are moments you just have to share because if you don't, something other might happen in that place. Yes, Reuben wanted to do, to do something great, but he missed opportunity to communicate that. At the end, when he came back, he saw that the whole place was empty, and he gets so angry. Why did you do this? Reuben, Reuben lost his position. The plot to kill Joseph. So when you see Judah, Judah is a Jacob's fourth son, was granted the, the role of a sovereign and ruler. So what Judah has done is the scripture talk about in Genesis 49, 10, the scepter will not depart from Judah. Another word, the rule and the staff, the authority is not going to depart from it. That was the blessing of Jacob over Judah. So why that? Because it played a big role. We see over here how a Jacob, a Judah is saying, what shall we profit, profit by killing our brother and covering his blood? You know, he's arguing, why should we do that? Then he suggests this. Let us sell him to the Ishmaelite and not harm him with our own hand, for he is our brother in our own flesh. He makes suggestions that he's a little bit wise. But personally, I condemn the whole family members. <laughs> Everyone want to conclude that every one of them is, is a part of what happened to Joseph. None of those plans is acceptable for me. They are all supposed to love him. They are all supposed to consider him for who he is. 
because he's still part of the family. So what we see is that Judah accept the rest of the people accept that what he, he proposed. But what he did that is so wonderful is at least he saved his life. At least they have not taken time to kill him. He saved his life. He is so obedient, child, out of the duty of his father, he was ready to execute his father's command. That's why he said, 13, here I am. And also he have a, he have a, a kindness towards his brethren. He knew that his brethren hate him. Even though that, it doesn't move him, it doesn't discourage him to go and to serve his brothers. He went to Shechem first, but in Shechem they find that uh, they move from there. And because they move from there by the help of somebody around the countryside, now he went to the Dodem, the place that they find his brothers. They conspire against him. They conspire against him for the reason I already told you. They conspire against him because he is a favor boy for his father. They conspire against him because God has revealed, revealed things to him. He had a great dream, something that he just communicated to his family members. He actually communicated that, but he got himself in trouble. We see the New Testament said, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. How cruel they were in their design to commit a murder. He said, come and let us kill him and throw him into one of the pit. We will see what will become of his dream. That is not good. We don't wish that to any family to punish his brother this way. But God is in the midst of all. God, the sovereignty of God, is moving over in all situations. God overruled all to serve his own purpose by making Joseph his leader, his leader to save the life of many people. Joseph has been going through law. Joseph has been despised by his family members. He's been sold to slavery. And when they get to the Egypt, now they sold to him to uh, a gatekeeper, and they sold him to uh, one of uh, the leaders there, a part of her. And uh, all this have trained Joseph how to deal with the situation. You can see, if you have learned the history of Joseph, he has uh, so much uh, skill. He's someone who has fear of God, someone who, who loves justice, someone who wants to do the right things, someone who has wisdom because God has uh, equipped him. This is what makes him so special, even through the difficulties. Uh, and when they accuse me all over, get to the prison, he still come up victorious. Hallelujah. I'm praying that one of you will come up victorious today. I don't care what people are saying over you. I don't know how people despise you because of who, the way you look like. Because they learn about this, you do this, you do that. Because your heart is so clear. Because you love Jesus Christ. Because you've been filled with a heart bubble of love for others. I declare in your life that the favor of God will cover you. That the power of God will cover you to save you from the damnation of the evil one. You cannot be defeated. So, Joseph was here a type of Christ. You know, uh, we see in this story the character and love of Jesus Christ. You know, through, though he was, he was the beloved son of his father and a hate by wicked world, yet the father sent him out to visit us in great humility and love. We all know the story of Jesus Christ. When he came for the world, 
but we see what he endured. He endured things to the point where he went to the cross and died for the world, for you and me, so we can have life, eternal life. We see the, the, the situation of, uh, of, of uh, Joseph. He has been treated badly. He has so much consequences, uh, 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 seconds in his life where uh, he doesn't even know what to do. He finds himself in a prison. But because the wisdom of God upon him, the dream, he has so much skill now to, 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 to interpret a dream to the king. God has used him in a, a mighty way to do great things. And God, Jesus Christ, came to his own, and his own not only received him now, but consult against him. This is the heir. Come, let us kill him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Matthew 27, 23. It's just a similar things, right? Joseph was the person that had been appointed to save the whole family. God planned, sometimes it looked like uh, impossible. We are living in the world right now that uh, um, whatever we see around is so negative, right? People saying that it won't work. People saying that you can, the way things are going will be worse. Why? Because that's what they know. But my God and my Bible is telling me otherwise. Because if you sit, you stand in the side of God. If you love God for all your heart, your soul, and mind. If you are following the principle of God, the joy of the Lord will flow to your heart. The understanding that no matter how difficult everything is going, you still have that peace in you. Because that's not the peace that the world gave. You know, because you went to the job, you got this paycheck, you are so happy. No, we are talking about something that's setting down in your spirit. God Almighty. That's the, that God that gave that kind of peace for many of us. The same God want to give you the same things. Are you ready to receive that peace of God? in the midst of the chaos society we are living today. I know God has a, a plan. He always want to do something great. Look, they despise Joseph because the dream and the position he holds in their father's heart. They despise him. You know, people might be despising you all the time. The best place to be in this life is to know God sincerely. It's not go to the training or go, you know, follow somebody first step and memorize something here and there. We are talking about having the Spirit of God dwell in your heart. The person that is going to make everything okay when things look like it's not working. We are talking Almighty God who loves us so much and he doesn't want any one of us to perish. That's same, that God I'm talking about today. Are you ready to receive the Almighty God? The plot against Joseph. They strip him. The envy coat, uh, coat of many colors. They, they're trying to take like they take the, the coat of Jesus, right? <laughs> Our Lord Jesus was a strip of his seamless coat. And then made to be lowly servant. You know, those moments when things look a little bit dark in your life. But I'm so thankful for you because you have Jesus Christ in your life. You are not going to be afraid. Sometimes things might look, but it's not me that things will affect you. Because our God who lives inside of you is greater than all those things that are distracting you from him. As I'm praying for you that uh, you be strengthened. Be strengthened in the power of God and his might. Be strengthened knowing that uh, once you have a God in your life, anything that comes against you will be defeated. Why? 
because you are not the fighter. You're not going to be the one who's going to fight that person or that situation. God who loves you so much, who will do the job in your behalf. You know, they, 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 they're trying to, to starve him when they put him in the pit. They envy, uh, they envy him. They just don't think that uh, they should be. That's what the evil people want to do to the, uh, those that love the Lord. But we learned that before. They will not succeed. The word that I want to give you today is to stand strong in your belief. Stand strong because God who loves you will fight in your behalf. Proverbs 27 says, Where envy when pity is banished and the humanity itself is forgotten. People don't have pity because they don't have God on them. They are hatred people because they chose to be that way. We are in the society right now, that's why I talked earlier, the family are divided, our religion are divided, we are against each other, but we got to be a wake up. We got to stand up quick to love, to start loving people, to start loving God first and loving people. God to build back our society that already divided. God want the best. And I truly believe that we're going to see that happening. The best of God in our life, in our community. They were grieved for the affliction of Joseph. You know, Joseph cried in that, uh, in that, in, in that pit and uh, they sold him for a letter. And uh, the, the story we all know is how God turned things that look so worse for the better. They can, people can treat you the way they want to. They are not controlling your life. I was, I was, make, I was studying with uh, my son, Serge. This is about the spiritual uh, emphasis study. When uh, he is dealing with his own life, uh, how to get over certain things in his life. And we are talking about walking in the flesh and the spirit. You know, we are those fights that is going on constantly in our society, in our own life. That's why we need the Lord in our life. That's why we need to cultivate the love for each other. That's why we have to be tuned to the power of God in our life. You know, knowing this, that you cannot stop God's divine plan. The plan that God has for you. The brother could not overcome the will of God for Joseph's life. Joseph already have a, God already have a picture of that. And he showed that picture a little bit to Joseph. But the time to get there, it took time. It's just like David. You remember when David was, a, was anointed to be king? He has not been king overnight. He had to go through a lot of things. Have to deal with the king, with the evil soul. He had to go through so many things. They want to kill him at the end. Because God has anointed him to become a king, he come up to be a king. That's what things are. So for us as a Christian, nobody on the face of this planet can take you for the position God gave to you. Can I say that again? No one on this planet can remove you from the position God has put you in. Because it's ultimately, it's a God plan that we are, have life today. It's through the God plan that you and I can be, be fulfilled His plan on this planet. He loves you. He cares for you. Jesus came to here, to this world, to die for your sin and mine. But at the same time, we are in a fight. We call that a warfare. People won't be happy. Why? Because they don't have God on them. Why? Because that's where the society is. Why? Because people just want to destroy things. That's we, the Bible talk about that the devil is come to destroy, to kill, and to steal. That's the world. So that spirit is moving in the people's heart constantly. That spirit is a dominator people who don't have God. That spirit is make things worse when the people don't, they want to reject God 
in their life. God is in a position of moving in your life. Dreams are a way to communicate with the divine or a way to communicate with the deepest part of ourselves. God can speak to you in many ways. Sometimes you just, you, when you start speak, you, uh, studying and reading and fasting sometimes, you just hear a little voice. You just know God is speaking to you. Sometimes he speaks to you to your heart. Sometimes through the dream. So God knows how to get his message to you. Joseph showed that the worst condition possible may not be final. The worst condition, condition possible may not be final in your life. God have a better plan. Don't be discouraged. I'm asking you to just to be encouraged. We never know when the next step will lead to success. God wants you to move further in your success and your walk with him. We are the hand and the feet of God in this planet. God always said in his word, you are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. So it doesn't mean lie if you want to get to this. He wants you, your presence in every place, every community that you find yourself in, not just to be just a person, but to be a truly the person who make a difference. Are you making a difference in where you are today? Is there anything you think you can do in your community that you've not been doing? Is there something that just challenges you right now that you feel like, uh, how can I do this? Let us know we're going to start praying for you. Because sometimes for certain decision-making, for certain action in life, it needs a lot of prayer. Because once you have uh, that heart to do the good things, the devil already stand against you. So it's a warfare. It's a warfare. Sometimes you have to walk, you have to tell people to pray with you. Sometimes you just have to fast about it. You gotta keep praying until God make a way when it seems to be nowhere. Everybody might be saying, oh, you can't do it. This is too hard. This is too big. That's why we all say, we, we are so scared, scared society. Oh, too big, too hard. You can't do it. But when you trust Almighty God, everything will be possible. Yes, we have to learn one thing before I close it. We should always forgive and forget. We see Joseph modeling the correct practice of always forgiving and not punishing crime. We all know the story when God was sold him uh, in Egypt, now he, he hold, by God's grace, he hold the position of leadership. And his brothers went back to see him because they don't even know that he was, he was Joseph. They're just seeking for food. Finally, they, they connect together. He's supposed to punish them. But he did something wonderful, and I want you to do that too. He forgave them all. Actually, he become like a uh, a blessing to the whole family, the whole nation. This is what God intended for us. That kind of action it put you in the right position. Have you seen any angry man who want to fight back? Happy? Never. When you are angry of a situation because you did to me, I want to do back to you, and you are, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you're not happy because yes, you are offended. Yes, somebody did wrong things against you. That's true. How you respond to it? You want to fight back in the same way? That's not the way you build happiness. That's not the way you build, you build the peace. The Bible says, pray for your enemy. Pray for those who offend you. Love them as a, as a tool, as a strong tool. As a local soccer. What? Because you know why you say what? Because this flesh was not conditioned to do that. We are in the flesh. You don't have God inside you. That's why it's difficult for some Christians to pray for their enemy. God said, pray for your enemy. 
love them. That's what God said. That's one of the things that is a challenge today in our society. Please learn to pray. Please let your light shine so people might see your good work and praise Almighty God. Amen? I'm praying for you today that uh, God to transform your life. I pray for you today that no, what, no matter what is going, any negativity that's going to attack you, I pray by the blood of God, that the blood of Jesus Christ to cover you. I pray for the blood of Jesus Christ to do great things in your life today. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, in Jesus' name, let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this message you gave me. Thank you for inspiration that uh, we all need to learn something to able to serve in our community. If you are watching me today and you have not really served and you don't even know how to serve the Lord, I just want you to pray with you. First of all, repeat after me. That is a command. Confession. Confess the Lord, your King, your God as your Lord and Savior. So repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Today, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. And today, I want to confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Help me, Almighty God. I want to serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray for you now. Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone who have received, have prayed this prayer. I pray for everyone who have taken this step of courage to repeat this prayer. Mighty God, I pray for your favor over that person, the favor, Lord God, to redeem where they are, to come to the place you want them to be. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen.